Let's talk a little bit about phase melting of igneous rocks and how do we get these beautiful patterns. Um, so some things you need to understand or recall from your geology courses. So the phase melting of igneous rocks. What do we mean by this one? So uh, when we have a rock or a molten material, like a molten magma, we start out with a liquid, right? And so the rock is a liquid at first. And then somehow over time, we transition a complete liquid into a complete crystalline solid with all kinds of minerals kind of in there. That makes total sense. But how do we get from liquid to solid? It doesn't happen in one fell swoop. There is a transition, and actually in this transition period, we have both liquid and solid mixed together. So literally crystals floating in a liquid melt. The boundary, when that starts, is called the liquidus. It's a temperature boundary and also a pressure boundary. So at the liquidus temperature, we are starting to form our little first tiny crystals. That process is complete once we cross the solidus boundary. So at the solidus boundary, we have almost all crystals and hardly any amount left. And once we cross it, it's all solid. So what does it mean for a diagram that has temperature and also depth of pressure included in it? Well, basically create something like this. Temperature increases from left to right, depth kind of goes down, and we can see the purplish here supposed to be all solid. The red here is supposed to be all liquid. And in this transition zone, we have as we cool things down, as we make things colder, we are creating more and more crystalline solids that then all come together, something like that. Um, hopefully, this makes sense. Now, past the solidus here, past that line, we have an all solid. Everything is crystal. And past the liquidus, past this line, we have a complete melt. There's not one single crystal left. Only here in the middle here do we have a mix of both. And we can sometimes even estimate in our transition from a solid to a liquid or vice versa how much melt is there. Down in this line, it's only 25% melt. Here, closer to the liquidus, we have 75% melt. So how do different rocks then react to this differentiation in transitioning between a complete liquid and toward a complete solid? Well, we have different liquidus curves of when the process happens when we have different composition of igneous rocks. For example, a dry basalt, with very little other liquids in it, like a water vapor or carbon dioxide, has this liquidus starting curve, you know, of everything liquid by the time we start to grow our first crystals. Dry granite starts at a little lower temperature. So there is already a discrepancy in liquidus curves for our various igneous rocks. When we start that, of course, um, and add some other liquids in it, then my liquidus curves change in my temperature when we transition from a melt into my first crystals is actually somewhat lower. Now, if we enlarge this picture here a little bit, and we also superimpose on that the solidus curve for a wet basalt, we notice something. There is some overlap, right? Here's where the liquidus of my granitic or acidic melt starts. Here's the liquidus um, um, of the transition again 
for the basalt, but the solid is for the basalt here in blue. We have a little overlap area right there. So if we go to this magma mixing right there and we focus on this field, something interesting is going on because on the mafic rock, we are on our way out, and on the acidic rocks, we are on our way in, right? So let's look at this field a little bit. Here is a liquidus for my granite, and here is a solidus for my mafic material. Well, if I create a schematic overlay from the liquidus to the solidus, liquids press crystals in the mafic system, you can see what is happening, right? Here we have 75% melt, here 50% melt, here 25% melt. Eventually we are all solid when we come over to the other side. If I now superimpose the seam on the same chart for my acidic rocks, we generate a field of overlap. When the mafic material has only 25% melt left, right there, um, my acidic material actually starts its first crystal growth. When we have 75% melt in the acidic ma ma material, um, we already almost have, you know, only 1% or so of melt left in the mafic materials. So there's a little overlap. If we look at this closer, then we can now understand how we get these fantastic patterns at the ring dike at Virginia Dale. Um, the acidic material here is fully molten, while the more mafic material has already solidified, and we generate these interesting mixing patterns. So, if we go and explore there a little bit, you will find an array of beautiful mixing patterns with the mafic material having very, very sharp edges and the um, acidic material being kind of very liquidy in between these sharp edges.